Hello there. It's been a while since the last video, but I'm still alive and the project is moving forward nicely. So what I've been doing these past six months, I'll try to keep it brief and summarize as much as possible, as there's just too much to cover in a single video. The thing is, I reached that moment. That moment when you realize that even though you tried to build a solid architecture from the start and keep everything decoupled and clean, you still run into issues that slow down development. I guess this is pretty normal since I think it's nearly impossible to get every architectural decision right on the first try. And yep, my architecture wasn't quite right, and it was making development harder and harder, especially when adding new features and stuff. So at that point, I realized I had two options. Keep pushing forward until the core loop was complete, constantly fighting bugs and inconsistencies, and basically entering a kind of development hell. Or scrap everything and do a full refactor with a more logical architecture, while also implementing all the systems for the core loop along the way. I chose the second option, and honestly I'm glad I did. Now the game is playable, most of the core systems are up and running, even if they're still unpolished, unbalanced and a bit buggy, but everything feels more flexible and consistent, and adding features and content is way more straightforward. Instead of refactoring the old project, I started fresh, porting what I had while shifting to a different approach and implementing design patterns to keep everything as modular and decoupled as possible. This time, I decided to structure the project around an event bus, where all communication goes through an event manager that sends and receives events to subscribed objects. I wrote a blog post about this and I'll leave the link in the description in case you are interested. The main idea here is to make all the objects absolutely unaware of each other's existence and trying to avoid direct references as much as possible. Sure, it has some downsides, of course, like making it harder to track signals, but then the flexibility it provides is worth it and once you get used to the system it makes everything way more modular. For example, something as simple as taking damage has consequences all across the entire game. The data manager needs to receive the value and update the corresponding dictionaries. Then the player should trigger some kind of animation. The HUD needs to update, the notification system has to display it, and then the enemy that dealt the damage might need to react in case the character dies or something. And yep. Yeah. That's why many systems need to be aware of what's happening, and manually calling them one by one every time something happens would be a nightmare. So with this system, when a character deals damage, all relevant elements listen for that signal and react accordingly. Also, for example, I implemented a factory pattern that handles object generation based on data, unifying everything into a single script to maintain consistency and keep procedural generation centralized. A commander pattern was made to handle actions like moving objects or using skills. Each action generates a command that is received and controlled by a parent commander, which sends out signals when commands finish. Since commands can be parallel or sequential, this allows me to track when objects have completed their actions. The game heavily relies on coroutines, so I built a global twinner class to handle all the generic twins that control the necessary properties. So depending on whether I want to wait for them to finish or not, I either call them with a wait or run them asynchronously. I made it this way because I think I should avoid as much as I can all the timers with magic numbers to wait for actions or things to happen. They should always run sequentially or in parallel depending on the situation. Also, almost all twins can be skipped to avoid waiting every time I'm testing the game, and it helps to keep my mental sanity in check. One thing that I can't stand is when the game freezes every time it loads something. I fucking hate it. It makes the game look so unpolished and unprofessional, and there's no an easy way to fix it. So I implemented a scene loader to load the scenes asynchronously, so that if the game is loading something, at the very least, an animated interface should appear or the object should be loaded in progressively instead of everything locking up. It was pretty tricky to implement, and while it mostly works, I still haven't completely eliminated the issue where the game stutters when the camera suddenly has to render everything. For example, after loading the map and characters asynchronously, when the camera moves, it has to draw everything suddenly, and that causes a hitch. And this doesn't happen because the loading, but rather the rendering, 
and I haven't found a solution for it yet. At this point, I've ported almost everything, but I left some things out for now so they don't get in the way of development. I simplified the former intro since it's not something that I need right now. I removed all audio to avoid dealing with it until I have everything set up. Also, I disabled character customization for now because there have been changes to the API that handles bone modification. And I'd like to rework some things based on that while also using it for enemy creation. Speaking of that, I've been experimenting with procedural animations like tweaking posture based on the character's equipment or making them look directly at you when you open the inventory. And I don't know if I'll keep it since it's obviously really hard to make it look good and natural. What do you think? Initially, the game's design revolved more around different challenges in each room, keeping combat super simple. But in the end, we are here to kill stuff, right? Plus, all the itemization and class systems lose meaning if the game isn't centered around killing. So, if the game has deep itemization and class systems, they need a strong combat foundation to make sense. So, I redefined class archetypes around the strength, the story, and intelligence, with low stat numbers so that every point actually matters. I don't want players to have like 1000 points of strength and then deal a million damage, so balancing this is going to be a challenge. But that's the goal. These stats should be the key to how you approach each fight, whether you want to focus on precision, evasion, or just brute force at the cost of other stats. I started implementing the core combat mechanics, the turn-based system, skills, buffs, probabilities, etc. But along the way, I had an idea for the action points. What if instead of just using them to perform actions, they already have some impact by having some probability-based effects? Like, for example, an action point could just not be consumed or apply different buffs. This could add a layer of a strategy that potentially could be really interesting. And even these action points could have some synergies with items in some way, but we'll see. Anyways, I won't cover all this combat stuff until it's better designed and more advanced, so I'd rather make a dedicated video once things are further along. Finally, just to say it's part of the process, I went through the nightmare of understanding the Steam API, building and uploading those first builds. So right now, I'm gathering feedback from local devs and friends to identify major UX and gameplay issues. So what are the next steps in the roadmap? First, to gather more feedback and apply necessary changes. Then design enemies, both gameplay and art. Work on animations work on balance and itemization, flesh out skills and class perks, port the character editor and improve the class visuals so there's a difference between them. Then work on interactions between your characters, and then an infinite backlog of polishing and book fixing. Long story short, a lot of hard work, a lot of progress, but I'm happy with how the project is going. There's still a lot to do, but I feel like I'm on the right track. Also, must say that this stage of development was too crucial to stop and make videos, but now I want to get back into it more regularly. Thanks for watching, lads. Subscribe if you are interested in the project, it helps. And don't forget to wishlist the game on Steam, that it helps even more. Onward!